I'm short, so I'll be brief. <laughs> and um, and I, uh, I want to tell the story about uh, bulls and mosquitoes and earthquakes and geology teachers and Iran and uh, Tajikistan and Kashmir and China and Denver in uh, under six and a half minutes. <laughs> and um, I want to talk first about um, the uh, Dujambe, uh, Tajikistan. Now, in Dujambe, there is a uh, bull underneath the earth, people believe, and that causes earthquakes. Um, and the bull is bothered by mosquitoes. And so when the bull um, shakes, the earth rumbles. Now, this is a problem because some buildings sink and some buildings sway. And the, this issue of uh, earthquakes is a very big deal. The students uh, don't know what's going on. And so enter someone named Solmaz Mohajir. And Solmaz was born in Iran and experienced a 2003 earthquake in Iran. And then she was a, she's a geology teacher, so she went to Kashmir in 2005 with her GPS equipment, and she saw what was going on there. She saw that uh, the buildings uh, sway and sink, and, and people didn't know what to do. And so she began to create these lessons, and she created media, and she created uh, stories, and the students made books. And this is, you know, the mosquito um, that they built. I had to, ha I had to have this mosquito. And what happened in, uh, in, in Tajikistan is the students began to create the curriculum around excellent science. So this is an earthquake-prone area, Tajikistan, right? And then, of course, Kashmir. And then, of course, with popsicles and sticks and other kinds of things going on, China. Now, in the Chinese earthquake took place uh, May 12th, 2008. My organization had been working in this area. The exact epicenter, basically the exact epicenter. So we lost students. We lost teachers. We lost buildings. And I, I really thought I was going to lose my mind. Um, and what ends up happening is that you, you people, I guess, arrive for a reason. And so Maz got in touch with us and says, I have something. And I want to share this with you, these 13 lessons. And overnight, it seemed, uh, technology, education merged for a moment. Uh, films were translated and subtitled, pamphlets and podcasts and program, and people, by the way, who I have to say are incredibly high res people. <laughs> and one of the things that we saw very quickly is that this earthquake, where this is a shrine uh, parents put up in the very area where we worked. And um, this shrine had to stay because the parents really wanted the schools safe. Can you imagine all the things going on in the world and the schools kill your kid in a one child per family kind of setting? And so what, uh, what happened was that Solmaz accompanied me to China, and we talked with the Bureau of uh, Education, who had asked us back, and the Bureau said, come back and teach science and safety. It'll bring the parents in. But here's the deal. The, um, uh, Solmaz began to uh, uh, talk with uh, and showed the film about the bulls and the mosquitoes. And what happened was that the, we thought the guy was going to say, the Bureau had, oh, this is China. That's Tajikistan. Tajikistan, you know, poor country. We're, you know, a developed country. He didn't say that. He said, we are, I've not only learned something, but I don't feel alone anymore because this is happening to someone else. So I'd like to tell Maz um, to um, speak for herself. Emergency education here at Teachers Without Borders focuses on preparedness and planning. We taught a workshop in April 2009 and focused on earthquake science, safety, and mitigation. And all of these um, concepts were introduced through several interactive, hands-on, inquiry-based lesson plans. We know emergency education can save lives. We know very well that even one retrofitted school can save thousands of lives. Teachers do have, um, have a voice. And unfortunately, their voices are not being heard. Voices not being heard um, is really troublesome. 
And uh, what ended up happening is, of course, um, voices are not heard in Haiti, where the uh, University of uh, Purdue University warned the government that there would be a 7.x earthquake. It was a 7.2 earthquake. It was a shallow earthquake, 13 miles under the surface of the earth, and a perfect storm, really, because you had shoddy construction in a densely populated area, and then you had a people who wanted, when there's a civil disturbance of any kind, um, you know, a, a national or a natural disaster, their instinctual and immediate response is to run indoors. So that's how they died. And you know, I didn't know what to do, once again, felt alone myself. And so here's an interesting story, bringing it back to Denver, is that my, uh, my daughter uh, here is in the audience here, and is a teacher in Denver and at Florida Pitt Waller School, and she's preparing her lessons about uh, the geological formations, you know, uh, the Colorado uh, Student Assessment Program, and she doesn't know what to do. There are two Haitian kids in her class. They're frantically looking for any signs of life from home. Uh, the, kid, the rest of the kids in the class are completely freaked out about this. And then what ended up happening is that, once again, the call went out. Now, French and Creole and posters and podcasts and programs and people working in Haiti. This is this kind of collective experience about something that was you know, um, inspired in Iran and conceived in Kashmir uh, you know, and uh, tested in Tajikistan and re-engineered in China and made available for Haiti and for Denver. So with a textbook in one hand you know, and a telephone in another, she got the popsicle sticks and the shake tables and, the, and the, um, you know, all the materials that you need, and she made a difference. And her kids achieved and she didn't feel so all alone. So in the, in the time I have left, I just want to say that there's unbelievable technology out there. I just wish it were available and accessible and adaptable and um, you know, acceptable, and that you could take your work, recycle it, you know, come up with a gigantic recycling machine you know, at the post office, just drop it off and have it travel around the world, subtitled and changed. And I do believe um, that we're going to make the kind of difference um, that is the kind of reciprocity and generosity and grace and goodwill that teachers are uh, known for uh, all over the world. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> okay.